Hello again. Uh, last two sections of chapter 10 that we are going to study deal with polar coordinates and of course calculus in polar coordinates. So as we know, this is what we call the Cartesian system. In which every point, P, has a, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So p, x, comma, y. And this is I, uniquely identified, this point. However, we also have something called polar coordinates or polar system or polar coordinate system. or Cartesian coordinate system, or Cartesian system. So what are we talking about here about the polar system? Uh, we have something called a polar axis. We also have an origin, or also called a pole. And the representation of points here have more than a unique, this is a unique representation of point P. This is a unique representation character characterized by X and Y. But here this point, point P, it's not uniquely represented. We can find infinitely many representations of this point P. First of all, how we represent it, I'm going to use two different colors. So this is the distance between the origin or the pole and point P. And this is the angle, theta, in the positive side or the negative side as we know from trigonometry. So the coordinates of P here are R comma theta. The position is determined by the distance uh, between the origin and the point and by the angle. And why am I saying that this is not a unique representation? Not unique representation. Why? Because I can represent this point as r comma theta plus 2 pi. So this is the same with p, point p, r theta plus 2 pi is the same with theta plus 4 pi or is the same with r comma instead of theta I will have negative 2 pi minus theta and still land at the same point. Also there are other ways of representing the same point with a negative distance. Okay, so we'll see a few examples in a moment. Now, what I would like us to establish from the very beginning is the relationship. So the same thing here, if I call this theta, then what about sine theta? So sine theta equals the opposite, the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So it's y divided by r. From here, cross multiply, y equals r sine theta. In the same way for cosine theta, we have x divided by r adjacent over the hypotenuse. And of course from here we have that x equals r cosine theta. Also what we know from the Pythagorean theorem that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So these are basically all the necessary um, equations that we are going to be, to be using here. So we have several um, things to look at. Uh, number one, we're going to plot points. So plot points. Of course, in the uh, polar coordinate system, in polar coordinate system. 
Uh, the other uh, concern that we want to, or item that we want to have on the list, is changing from polar equation to coordinate equation uh, to Cartesian equation, and from Cartesian equation to the polar. So polar to Cartesian and back. So changing a polar equation into a Cartesian equation and changing a Cartesian equation into a polar equation. And number three, as being the last one here, is graph equations in polar coordinate system. So graph equations in the polar coordinate system. So let's start on page 692. Let me move on to page 2. Oops. So let's start with number 1 on page 692. It says, um, plot the points. So we have part A. Let me write all of them so I have them here. Uh, 1 comma pi over 4. Part B is negative 2, 3 pi over 2. And part C is 3 comma negative pi over 3. And they want us to plot them and then um, uh, find two other points. One with R positive and one with R negative. That's all they want for now. OK, so let's start with part A. 1 comma pi over 4. So first we will graph the angle, and the angle is pi over 4. So this is the direction of the angle. I'm going to put it out here so I can show whatever else I need here. So this is pi over 4. I'm going to keep that idea for now. And 1 is the distance. So assuming this is my unit, then this is 1. And this is the point in question with theta pi over 4 and the distance from the origin 1. So this is p 1 comma pi over 4. Now they want us to determine another angle with r positive. OK, fine. So I'm going to just do this. And I'm going to create another point, but it's the same point. So p is still 1. But this time, I have pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So again, pi over 4 plus 2 pi, that is 9 pi over 4. Now, let's see how we do this with a negative r. So we want the same thing with a negative r, which in this case is negative 1. OK, so here's how we do this. One possibility is not the only one. Uh, one possibility is to use a negative angle or a positive angle. So let's stick with the positive angle for now. So I really want to end up, so this is 1, and this will be the negative 1, right? So I want to end up here, and negative 1 will move the point up there. So what is this? Well, obviously, obviously a pi plus pi over 4. So pi plus pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. So again, how did we get this? So the angle 5 pi over 4 will bring us here. But now we are measuring 1, and this point will be 1 comma uh, 5 pi over 4. But we want negative 1 because we want to come back and land at this point. So this, was, this point is 1 comma 5 over 4, 4. But the negative 1, 5 pi over 4 will be back where we started. So that's all we wanted. So we determined um, another, the same position, but with a positive and a different angle. And uh, we also determined uh, the same position with a negative r and the corresponding angle. So let's move on to part b. In part b, we have negative 2 comma 3 pi over 2. So let's take a look. First, let's graph 3 pi over 2. I like to graph it way out so I can present in the middle what I need. 
So this is the angle theta 3 pi over 2. And now we want negative 2 units. Well, 2 units will be here. So this point will be 2 positive 2 comma 3 pi over 2. But we want negative. So we determine the angle. This point will be p 2 comma 3 pi over 2. But this is not what we are interested in. We want in the opposite direction because r is negative. So this is the point that we are interested in. So I'm going to call this point P1 not for, to com get confused. So the, the, what we are looking for is point P, negative 2, 3 pi over 2. Now we want to determine um, another two representations of the same point. So one would be... Um, so let's say P, one with positive 2 and one with negative 2. OK. So let's see how we determine one with positive 2. Very simple. All I have to do is just write this angle as pi over 2. And that's the positive. And now let's see how we obtain the negative. I can obtain the negative. Uh, determining or using a negative angle also. So let's say negative pi over 2. That's a possibility. So this will be negative pi over 2. And this will be with 2. But since it's negative 2, it will come back here. So both these two, or I should say all these three, are exactly the same position, different representations of the same point. OK, we also have 1 comma. Let's look at C, part C, 1 comma pi, no, 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 3 comma negative pi over 3. OK. So let's see how we represent this. Negative pi over 3, so this is, if you divide uh, this quadrant into three equal parts, 30, 30, 30, right? The 60 degree, the negative 60 degree will be right here. So this is the negative pi over 3. Now, in the same direction, without changing direction, we want three units. OK. 1, 2, 3. So this is the point P, 3 comma negative pi over 3. OK. They're asking us to determine a same representation, I mean the same point, different representation, one with a positive r and one with a negative r. Okay, so let's see what we get. So one possibility would be to go around this way, which is basically 2 pi, 2 pi minus pi over 3. So this is 5 pi over 3, and it stays where it is. 5 pi over 3 and go in this, that's that direction. Now let's see what we have here. Very, very simple, negative 3. I have negative pi over 3 minus 2 pi. And negative pi over 3 minus 2 pi will be negative 7 pi over 3. So this is how we represent uh, the same point with different, basically, different representations. OK. Um, let's move on to another type of problem. Let me see what am I doing here. I'm on page three. Let's look at page three. Okay. Okay. So um, problem five on the same page, 692. Uh, we are given two parts, negative, oh, no, no. Negative 4 comma 4 and part B 3 comma 3 the square root of 3. And let's see what they want. On this one, it says um, the Cartesian coordinate, so we're given the Cartesian coordinate and they ask us to find the polar coordinates of the point um, again with uh, a positive and a negative R. Good. So first of all, let's go, let's start with A. 
we plot the point negative 4, 4 in Cartesian system. That's the point, negative 4, comma 4. This is the R. And since um, both x and y in absolute value are the same uh, measurement, of course, this must be, this angle here, must be pi over 4. And if it's pi over 4, as we know, okay, these are both 4 units. So can I determine r? Yes. I know the angle, right? Theta is in here, pi over 4. Okay. So uh, let's determine r first. So we have the right triangle. 4 squared plus 4 squared equals r squared. The Pythagorean theorem. So what I like to do is 16 plus 16, so r squared equals 2 times 16. And when I take the square root from both sides, I get r equals 4, the square root of 2. It's easier to simplify. OK. Um, they're only asking us to, uh, the Cartesian coordinate of a point are given, find the polar coordinates. So, um, theta. So, theta is 90 degrees or pi over 2 plus pi over 4. So, I, maybe I shouldn't say theta here, this theta. So, I'm going to call it theta 1. Okay. So, um, this particular point that has coordinates negative 4, 4 in Cartesian system is the same with the point P with an uh, angle of pi over 4 plus pi over 2, which is 3 pi over 4. And the distance in the positive direction, of course, of 4 the square root of 2. So we determined a representation of this point in polar coordinates with positive r. And now let's uh, create one with negative r. So the negative 4, the square root of 2. So one op option will be to consider negative pi over 4 here. So this will be negative pi over 4. So negative pi over 4 with 4 with positive 4, comma, two, the, uh, 4 to the square root of 2 will be a point here. But if it's minus, it will end up back where we started from. So these are two possibilities. Of course, this, uh, this is not the only one. We can consider um, adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi. We have other options. But these are two representations, one with positive r and one with negative r, of the same point. OK, let's look at 3 comma, so this is part b, b, 3 comma, the squ 3, the square root of 3. Fine. These are in the positive, both positive, so they have to be in the first quadrant. So I'm trying to find my calculator for 3. 3 times the square root of 3 is roughly 5.2. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.2, somewhere here. So this is the point, 3, comma 3, the square root of 3. And this is r. And uh, this is 3, and this is 3, the square root of 3. So let's determine the angle. So let's see what we get. Let's determine r. Doesn't matter, the order is not important. So if we start with r, r squared equals this squared, which is 9 times 3, 27, plus this squared, which is 9. So then r squared equals 36, and we take the square root. And we normally write plus or minus, not here. So r is the distance, so that's why we write only 6. So the coordinates of this point in polar coordinates will be 6, comma, or they can be negative 6, comma, and we'll find that uh, option in a minute. So now let's find, um, let's find the angle theta. And we know that um, x equals r cosine theta. And we know that x is 3. 
we know that R is 6, and we know that cosine theta will be 1 half. If cosine theta is 1 half, then the angle is pi over 3, because only pi over 3, a cosine pi over 3 is 1 half. So here we know this is pi over 3. Now another option with a negative. We can go in the positive direction if you want. That's let this time let's here we use a negative angle. Let's use a positive angle here. So we will have to land up at the same on the same extension with theta. So that will be pi over three plus pi. So pi plus pi over three is four pi over three, and it will be. Po negative, uh, positive 6, but the negative 6 will um, make us land back where we started from to the same point. And of course, there are multiple representations, as I said. So we wrote this here. This is not unique. We can find infinitely many representations of that, but here it's absolutely unique in the Cartesian system. That's one other advantage of the polar polar coordinate system. Okay, moving on then. Now, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we plotted points. Now we want to go from back from polar equations to Cartesian equations and see what happens, and then graph. So I'm on page four. Okay, moving on. Four. Okay. So uh, seventeen on page six ninety two. And we have r equals 5 cosine theta. Identify the curve by finding the Cartesian equation for the curve. OK, fine. So let's do that. So remember, we are limited to three different situations, so three different equations. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. x equals r cosine theta. And y equals r sine theta. This is, these are our limitations. So when I look here, um, I realize that I can replace cosine by x over r. So this gets replaced by x over r. So therefore, we have r equals 5 x over r. Cross multiply, r squared equals 5x. OK, so back to the first equation, I will replace r squared by 5x. So then x squared plus y squared equals 5x. The whole thing is we don't have any cosine sine in Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate system, right? So we need to really get rid of that. So I did. This is not sufficient, though. We move everything to one side because we're asked to, to identify the equation if we can. So notice that this is very sim very close to a circle. And how do I know that? Well, I have to complete the square. This square is completed. But this one is not. If you remember the completing the square method, we have to identify the middle coefficient. We have to identify the, the I we have to divide the middle coefficient by 2. We have to square this number, and this is what we have to add to both sides, not to one only, right? So I'm adding here 25 over 4, and I'm adding here 25 over 4. When I complete the square, these three condense, are condensed here. Plus y squared equals 25 over 4. What do we learn from here, from this? We learn that this is a circle with a central of 5 halves, comma, 0, and a radius of 5 over 2. Let me refresh your memory on the equation of the circle. x minus h, everything squared, plus y minus k, everything squared equals r squared. By comparison, I get this to be 5 halves. And I get this to be 0, because there is nothing subtracted from y. And I take the square root from this to find the radius. OK, so we went from polar to Cartesian. Now let's go back 
on, on page five. Am I, am I, why am I on time with time? Okay. I'll have to stop this and continue in the next video. I have 24 minutes already. Or 20.